All right, guys. So this is the breakout session for I hope you guys the last uh, item on your agenda today. I know it's been a long day. So this is the um, student life breakout session. I have some of my fellow classmates behind me that are going to share some of their experiences with you. We're going to talk about some student organizations that they're involved in. Um, again, take this time. Pick up Brian, ask questions, particularly if you're involved or interested in being involved in one of those organizations. Um, we want to let them introduce themselves, and yeah, we will start from there. Uh, my name is Ira Coates. I'm a Rising 3L uh, from Savannah, Georgia. Um, I'm involved in Mock Trial Report, um, SBA. Um, I'm the director of the Gospel Choir here at school. I'm also the pro bono representative for the school, so if you need pro bono hours, um, my office will be doing Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Gilchrist. I'm originally from McCormick, South Carolina, but I grew up in metropolitan Atlanta, Georgia. Um, today I'll be discussing my position as far as interim vice president for the Student Bar Association, and I'll also elaborate on various others, um, various other organizations on campus. Hi everyone, my name is Raquel Simmons. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I am a rising 3L and I am involved in several student organizations, um, Moot Court Honor Board, the Mock Trial Team, Real Property, Probate Trust Law Society, as well as the Public Interest Research Bureau. And I think I'm going to be talking, yeah, I'll be talking to you guys about any of those, but specifically Moot Court too. Hi everyone, I know a lot of you were in the, or the, presentation I was just in, but again, my name is Kelsey Amsdale. I'm originally from Oil City, Pennsylvania. I'm a rising 3L. Um, I'm the president of the Moot Court Honor Board. I am the communications editor on the editorial board for Law Review. I am a student ambassador, and then I've also had an externship through the school. I can talk to you about any of those opportunities that you would like to know about, but today I'm specifically talking about Law Review. And I apologize, I'll be specifically talking about mock trial. Um, yeah, my apologies on my <laughs> rising 3L. <laughs> and my apologies, I left out. I'm a student ambassador as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> Do you want to go right, first, Ira? So is it anyone, either one of you guys can start for this demo? Just about your organization, you know, how you come apart, and share some of your experience. Um, Mock trial pretty much is a, a one-time opportunity, which you'll find out is the case with a lot of these organizations here. Um, you start your second semester of your 2 year, so you do get the first semester kind of hone in your skills to be able to focus on grades and get everything. And then um, most of the time we schedule it around the time uh, during midterm because you're trying to simulate what it would be like if you actually do a competition. Um, life doesn't stop. You actually do competitions while you're going, while you're still studying, while you're doing other things, while you're still having to prepare uh, for class. So we're trying to see if you have what it takes to be able to time manage for one and be able to um, really be able to multitask. Um, we put you through a simulation that's quite similar to a real competition. We give you a fact pattern. Um, normally it's one we've already done in competition and you go through the whole process. Um, you do an opening, you do a, a cross, you do a direct, you do um, a closing. And um, pretty much you're pitted against um, everyone that you're going to be going through in school. Well, we answer some questions, but we probably we pretty much lend it to you to be able to kind of do it on your own. Um, most of your witnesses will be two L's and three L's who are on the team. Um, most of the people you're going to be judged against, I mean, uh, judged by, are going to be uh, uh, throughout those certain rounds. And in the final round, you'll be judged by our actual, uh, uh, our actual advisor, um, who will show pretty much. We'll pick any. We don't have a set limit, so we pretty much pick anybody who shows the skills and the talent, because um, we're always looking for something in somebody. So there's not really a set way to do things. Um, we go to different competitions, all the way from California to DC to Miami, and those lend very different kinds of attorneys, very different styles. And so we try and pick um, pretty much anything because even just having an accent, it can make you different than somebody else. So um, everybody on the team plays their part and um, we make sure we, we hone in on your skills. And once you make the team, you go into an internal competition amongst the people that made it. And then based on how you do there, we rank you based on what competition we'll send you to. So um, if you decide you don't want to do it, that's pretty much your one and only opportunity to try out. So even if you feel like you don't have enough time, I always suggest doing it because once you make it, then you can make the decision to decline. Or um, as I've done it, my experience was, uh, I, I thought I was going to fall apart. It, it, it literally was a lot. And for us, we didn't even do the whole nine. We just did a closing argument competition. So um, for us, the way the new style is, if you can really get through the process, you'll be a better advocate. Um, I've gotten great opportunities from Mock Trial, Moot Court, a lot of these other organizations. And um, 
I wouldn't have changed it. And I feel like I wholeheartedly say try out. Even if you don't make it, try out and then just say that you did. Right. Well, I'll be talking about um, the Student Bar Association. The Student Bar Association is, we pretty much run Florida Coastal. <laughs> um, you do have to come through us if your organization wants some money. Every org is uh, given a budget for the year where um, the Student Bar Association, based off of your student fees, a set budget is um, distributed to that particular organization. Currently on campus we have 32 organizations without including mock, MOOC, nor law review. Um, in order to get involved, there is a GPA requirement. In order to be a legislator, you must maintain a 2.0 GPA. Uh, in order to be on the executive board, starting with your president and your vice president, you must have a 2.6 GPA or higher. Um, in addition, you must serve as a legislator for at, at least a year. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, after that, one L year, if you know that you love politics or you just like to be hands-on, it's a great organization to get involved with. Every year we select a charity where we raise money, dress up, um, have a big ball, and donate a check. This Pretty past year, so yeah, this past year we donated over thirty thousand dollars in a year plus too. So it's something that we really take pride in. Um, we're really big on pro bono. Each legislative must complete six hours of pro bono work just for the student bar association alone. You're not allowed to cross over your hours. In addition, we meet every other Thursday. Um, there's a blocked off time. This year we're kind of going to switch things up so that Student Bar Association with other organizations aren't competing for time. So whenever the legislation is in session, no other organization will have any type of function during that time. Uh, normally our meetings are from uh, 12 to about 1.30 to try to get you in and out. We, uh, you have the student organizations come before the legislation to ask for money. Um, in addition, they also appeal for them to be a recognized student board on campus. And there's various other things that we do. We have a baseball team every year go out. Um, they come, ask for money, but they represent Florida Coastal well, um, champions. So we always like that. Uh, and I mean, we just support each other, honestly. Whatever you do, uh, just make sure that you keep the grades up, the curve, pray that it works in your favor. Um, yeah, and just enjoy life, <clears throat> honestly. Uh, for some of you who just walked in, again, my name is Raquel Simmons. I'm the current vice president of the Moot Court Honor Board. And Moot Court, what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot. <laughs> what don't we do, right? <laughs> so we are number one in the nation um, for the what, second, second year. year in a row now. Uh, but over the past five to ten years, we have consistently been in the top ten. Um, and so that just speaks for itself. It's a great organization. You know, as for, it helps you learn how to research, how to become a better writer, because when you're involved, you would have to potentially write an appellate brief. Um, and it's a monster. <laughs> The appellate briefs, they go to the competition and they get graded by other attorneys as well as uh, we have judges that come and judge. And so there's two components to it. There's a brief writing component and then an oral argument component. And the actually, this is our appellate courtroom. And so that bench right there is where our judges would sit. And this podium, but facing that way, is where we would argue. Um, so to, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So to become a member of the Moot Court Honor Board, we do a tryout process the second semester of your 1L year. So that's during the spring. And it occurs at the same time that mock trial is doing their tryouts and law review uh, and, and student ambassadors, but there's another opportunity to join student ambassadors. But basically, you only get one shot. And so I encourage you all to make sure that you do try out because there have been people who didn't try out and then they regretted not trying out. 
and it's just a fun process. Um, either way, it's going to help you in the long run because as a requirement of one of your LP courses during your second year of school, you'll have to do an oral argument for class. And people who have never done an oral argument before kind of freak out about it because it, it is a, a large portion of your grade for that final in that course. Um, so tryouts occur during the tryout process. You would be required to submit a writing sample and that would be qualified as your three. And normally we accept the writing sample. It could be anything that you've done in a writing class in one of your legal writing classes, but it has to be something that you've written while in law school. And then the other portion is delivering an oral argument. We give you all the materials, uh, the record, we call it it's the ROA or record on appeal. That is basically the fact pattern that you're going off of where it's got you know the outline of the issues, the legal arguments that have been made, whether on the pellet side or the appellee. Um, and I mean, just being part of moot court, honestly, is probably one of the best things I've done since I've been here in law school. Um, I, I know, I'm very, I'm very involved with it. I just, I love it. It's helped me, my oral, my oral advocacy, as well as my writing and research skills. And it's just an invaluable experience that you gain. Um, the, this past year, actually, court, all of us are members of the Moot Court Honor Board, just so you guys know. But um, this past year, um, Courtney and I were on a competition for Golsa, and we went to regionals. And uh, my partner, who's not here, we won second place at that regional competition. And I just thought that was the best thing in the world because it was my first competition where I was on the team as an oralist and brief writer. So I did both for that competition. And it's just, um, you know, we're like a family. Everybody helps one another. And it's just a really great experience. You get opportunities from moot court, um, from like job opportunities, or sometimes people walk away with business cards of the judges or attorneys that are there judging the competition. And um, so it's just a really great networking tool. It's a great experiential learning type of tool because you actually get to do the work and get that hands-on experience. Yes, and argue in front of real judges. Uh, I In South Carolina, we argued our final round in front of the, um, who was the chief? The chief, just, the chief justice for their, um, the South Carolina Supreme Court, or their Supreme Court, or was it their Court of Appeals? Was it their Supreme Court? It was their, it was their Supreme Court, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, it's just, it's great. Try out. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Again, if you weren't here, my name is Kelsey Amsdale, and I just want to, before I go into my law review spiel, just echo everything Raquel said about Newport. Obviously, you know, I'm heavily involved with all aspects of moot court and law review, and I just can't stress enough how great both organizations truly are. Um, all of my friends are on either moot or law review, um, and it's such like a family, close-knit environment. It, you have to try out for as much as you can. <laughs> um, going into law, what law review is, so many of you, I know when I came to law, law school, I knew law review was important, but I had no clue what law review was. So Law Review is um, essentially a publication, and we um, are a completely student-run organization. We have a faculty advisor. However, the editorial board is solely in charge of the organization, which is slight help from the faculty advisor. Um, what we do is we publish three journals a year. So we have a fall, a winter, and a spring journal. Um, they range from a variety of issues. So our fall journal currently that we're working on is all about children and the law and um, different adoptive rights, all kinds of stuff dealing with parental rights. Um, we always do a public interest law journal, which is usually um, our spring journal. And then we, our current, or no, that's the fall, winter journal rather, and then our spring journal is this year dealing with voting rights because it's going to be a election year, so we try to tie it to what's going on in the news. Now, we publish journals, but what happens is, so um, academics in the community, we work with JALA, which is Jacksonville Area Legal Aid. Their attorneys there who want to draft an uh, article to be published. Teachers, lawyers, being published is a, a high accolade you can have on your resume, so many um, practicing attorneys really covet that um, published um, position, rather. 
So they'll submit their articles to us, and then what we do is, upon receiving those articles, we pretty much break them down um, to the skeleton form. And what you do is, on Law Review, you will receive what's called an edit. You get approximately three a semester, so it's very doable. So while you're on an edit, you're very busy for about a 10-day span where you'll be solely focused on your editing responsibilities, but as soon as that 10 days is over, you're done with that edit and you only will have two more for the entire semester. So what you do is you get um, a chunk of the submitted piece of work, whatever the writing is on. Um, like I said, they range in a variety of topics, and then you check the grammar, the citations, the technical editing, and also the researches that have been cited within that work. So you'll go, and if they're citing to this specific case, you'll read that case and make sure whatever they're saying is what that case is actually saying to ensure that it's um, of a publishable quality work. And that not only gives them you know, a double check to make sure that what they're saying is accurate and make sure that what we're publishing is scholarly. Um, law Review, I can't stress enough, is such, um, it's universally known as one of the organizations to be in in law school. Um, when I was at, at the honors program, I had a dinner with an attorney in my honors program group downtown, and he said oftentimes they'll throw out a resume without law review on it because that's just how important it is because if you receive a resume with law review, that attorney knows, this person knows how to edit, how to write, and how to research, which is three of the key components to being a good attorney. Um, to get on law review, there are two ways. You can either grade on. In order to grade on, you have to either be in the top 5% of your 1L year class or be within the top 25 people, whichever is fewer. So for instance, my year, our top 5% was 14 students, and those 14 students all were extended invitations on the law review. It was not the top 25 students of our 1L class. Um, or, if you don't want to do the grade on route, you can do participate in the write on competition. For the write on competition, you are required to write a case note, which is you, we pr um, provide you with workshops, and so we'll teach you how to write a case note. It's six to ten pages on a case, and what you'll do is you'll read the case and then give an in depth analysis on both the majority opinion, the dissenting and concurring opinions, and then give your thoughts in a commentary portion as to why you feel the majority was correct in deciding one way and how you feel the ramifications for this case will be. Um, we just extended our invitations to the past, or for this 1L class, uh, 21 people were extended invitations to law review. We do not have a quota. We look for just quality, not so much quantity. So if you're, if we had 40 case note submissions and all were of publishable quality, all 40 people would be extended an invitation because in the end that helps our editing process. Once you're on Law Review, you have um, immense opportunities. Um, I got, I worked for a senior district court judge here in Jacksonville my spring semester, my 2L year. I got that because that was my mentor in Law Review's position. My two mentees on Law Review are now working for that judge this summer. So that goes with moot court as well. We really do try to keep um, our positions and our jobs within either the law review or the moot court family to just really keep in um, my philosophy is if I'm recommending someone for a job, I want to know that I know them well and I know that they're going to produce good work product and good work quality. And you know that when you're in one of those organizations. Any questions? Does anyone have questions for these guys? Uh, Courtney, you mentioned uh, about SBA. Um, I retired us before in the past uh, panel that uh, the freshman representatives have to be voted on. Can you talk more in depth about that? Oh, yes. We haven't set an election date for the upcoming class, but every year um, it'll be your 1L, 2L, and 3L legislators that you'll vote on. And it's based off of the amount of credit hours that you have because we do have part time students and full time. So, um, determinative of how the registrar office set your credits. Everyone that's a 1L is open to you. Once um, elections go up, your city flyers around. Um, hopefully we'll have something on the uh, televisions display to inform you and give you adequate time to let you know. But the elections are open to all 1L. 
the requirement, you're a full-time student, um, or just a student, honestly, because you can be part-time and run for a legislative position. The uh, going more into depth of what's ex what is expected from a 1L. Now, with you guys, it's kind of difficult when you're running because no one really know each other. So it's like, it's a hustle mentality. You got to get your name out there. I mean, I'm just being honest. Um, some people vote off of popularity. Some people vote for who's the right person for the job. I'm all about who's the right person for the job. Uh, hopefully we'll have a committed legislation this um, upcoming year. Not saying that the previous ones weren't. But uh, we have some major goals in mind. So you need to be committed to the job. Also, um, of course, all of you guys won't even have a GPA, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you'll inform, you'll be informed about how to properly campaign because your flyers have to be a certain distance from each other, and they can only be displayed in a certain area. And also, uh, we're now permitting you guys to advertise on social media, but you have to stop at a certain time. Um, I know politics. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, um, you will be expected if you win, uh, I want to say they sent out an email to let you know who actually won the position. And then um, we'll actually have an orientation where we'll go through the bylaws together so you'll actually know the proper protocol as far as um, what constitutes a quorum in a meeting, um, how long you actually have to be in your seat in order to be accounted for in that meeting because we do have certain things where um, you might have a legislator that needs to report to court or um, they may have um, class or something at a particular time. So our meetings are really scheduled during the block time to ensure that it really doesn't conflict, but we do know that we're law students and we're trying to train each other to become future attorneys. So that's the mentality of the legislation that um, when we actually convene that we have appropriate courtroom attire. That's what the bylaws say. So this year we will enforce that unless ahead of time we vote and say that, or if someone make a motion from the floor and say we're going to waive courtroom attire. Um, all of our meetings are open to the general public. So even if you're not a legislator, you can always come and sit in. We actually promote you guys to come and sit in to hear what we're discussing because it affects all students. Um, even if you're not a legislator, you can actually, within 20, no, within 48 hours, you have to notify the appropriate um, executive board member if you want to address the floor. And it must be in courtroom attire, um, unless we make that motion, but yeah, it must be in courtroom attire. Okay, uh, also, we have committees within the Student Bar, um, student bar Association health and wellness, um, multicultural, uh, let's see, we actually have a special committee for the ball, um, golf tournament, yeah, intramurals, that's really big because you have a bunch of law students that just like to relive their childhood um, and play flag football, or basketball, uh, softball. <laughs> I mean, we're like big children. I'm, I'm going to tell you up front, law school is depressing, okay? So let's just go ahead and get that out the way. It's depressing. You're going to laugh at the craziest things. Um, you're going to find humor in the law. Once you hear your first law school joke, you'll never forget it. Ours was about some chickens. Um, and it's a little inappropriate. So since they're recording me, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm just saying, but um, so it's like we promote you guys to get out there and actually get involved, but it's difficult. Your 1L year, you're going to be concentrating on, oh, it's the curve, it's the curve. I got to compete against this person. I got to compete against that person. That's all you're going to hear. You're going to see some things that's really not of becoming lawyers. Um, it goes against everything that professional responsibilities say that we're not supposed to do, but that doesn't mean that it should change your integrity and who you are. But the person that you are today will not be the person that you are once you exit these doors, because each and every last one of you will graduate, no matter if you're a part of SBA, Moot Court, Mop, no nothing. You will graduate, 
you will succeed, you will get a job because there's always criminals out there breaking the law. <laughs> so I mean, you know, this is a, a beautiful journey. But with the Student Bar Association, we do various things. We also partner with the um, student organizations on campus because they're under our umbrella. So they must be in compliance. You have orgs like the Military Law Society, the Muslim Law Society, Women's Law Society, Black uh, Law Students Association, the African uh, Law Students, Caribbean Law Students. So I mean, it's, it's diverse. Hulsa, the um, Hispanic Law Society. So it's like, it's something out there for each and every last one of you. Um, I would encourage you guys to start off small. If you know that um, you want to go into politics, SBA is an excellent board to be a part of, especially if you know you want to sit on the executive board and become a president or a vice president, secretary. You must be a legislator for a year. And I don't, I don't think that's something that they stressed when my class came in because it's a, it's a lot of great leaders out there that can be sitting that could represent Florida Coast. But the thing is, if you don't crack open the right books, or if you don't talk to the proper people that's in a position to assist you, you'll never know. So if y'all ever see me walking around and you have any questions, hit me up, uh, Courtney Gilchrist, FloridaCoastal.com. Um, just speak to me in the hallway. I would give you my cell phone number, but I gotta scope you out a little while longer. Um, yeah. Some crazy people in this work, but uh, <laughs> I mean, outlines, supplements that's something they don't tell y'all, too. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the inside scoop. <laughs> supplements are your best friends. Read the case books, okay? Read the case books. A supplement cannot supplement what your professor is going to teach you on, okay? What they're going to grade you on, and don't fall into that little myth about um, if I do good on my midterm, that means I know everything. No, they send you up for failure. If you do good, you're going to get a little cocky and arrogant. If you do bad, you're going to work harder, or you just going to tell yourself that you're a failure. That's not the case, okay? That's not the case. It's just to help you transition from the real world to how you function in law school, and hopefully you'll get an internship or an externship, and they'll teach you something different. Because half of the stuff we do up in here, we're going to do it in the real world. <laughs> but don't tell them I said that. They might want to erase that. <laughs> okay. Um, just very briefly, because I know about we're out we're of time. But very briefly, if you guys could talk about just how you balance being so involved with personal life and also just your classroom studies on top of your extra curriculum. So very briefly. Very, very briefly. Um, uh, to, I yeah. Um, my biggest advice for everyone is to treat law school like it's your job, especially your first year. I, I, I sh keep stressing your first year grades are critical. You have to do well your first year because that sets the foundation for every year after that, what organizations you get into, what jobs you get, what externships you get. Your grades are everything. But with that, you've got to balance it too. So if you my big philosophy is I like to get here at 8, leave by like 6, 6.30, go to the gym, go to happy hour, have dinner with my family. So just think like if you're wanting to do something fun or social, you need to put the hours in before you do the fun social. And sometimes that also says saying no to the beach or no to the volleyball social or whatever it may be. You just got to really work, especially your first year with your grades. Yep. To echo what Kelsey just said, it's all about time management. Um, so make sure that you do what you need to do for your classes first, and then that makes the time available for whatever else you have, whether it be something for a student organization or something fun, you know, outside of school. But just make sure that you're managing your time wisely because I'm involved in a lot here in school and outside of school. And the way that I do it all and still make really good grades is I make sure that I handle what I need to do first. I know that I'm here, my primary purpose of being here is for law school and to make sure that I graduate, get my degree, and pass the bar exam. So that's the first thing that I think about, getting my work done. 
I do that first and then I prioritize everything else. If I'm involved um, on a competition for moot court or mock trial, you know, you just have to manage your time wisely for that and then everything will fall into place. Just to echo what they said, I worked off of a color coded schedule. I'm like the military. I wake up at 5 and I'm going to bed by 11. But if I need to stay up late to make sure that I do what I need to do, then that's what's going to happen. So you have to train yourself and just know that it's an emotional roller coaster. You're not alone. So plan, prepare, prep, and execute. Um, I know for me, it, it may seem like it doesn't make sense if because when you start your 1L year and um, you start studying, you, you realize that there's not that much time during the day once you have the classes. And then to think about the concept of adding more things to it, it makes sense that you wouldn't be able to do all these things. But um, as you continue to start getting these, these different organizations, whether you mock trial, move court, law review, you notice that you, you actually you read faster, you, you analyze quicker. So um, I didn't notice until recently, but um, even though I, I keep adding more and more stuff to my plate, it doesn't feel that way. Um, I'm a big person about, I have a planner, I have my cell phone, I have an actual physical planner. I write down everything. Like I know where I'm gonna be, what day, what time, pretty much the whole month. But um, because of like the law the law review family, the Moat Court family, we, we do look out for each other. So a lot of times with certain classes, you don't have to study as hard because you're doing it all the time. Like evidence, I think I've maybe studied like, maybe like make like, like the week before. Because you, you're doing evidence throughout mock trial so much to what this stuff is second nature. To where when you're, you're doing the test, you don't have to worry about it. You have people who have taken classes before you, who have awesome outlines, who understand the subject matter a lot better than your classmates will ever understand it. So they're able to relate it to you in a way where you don't have to study the entire you know semester every single night. But you can prioritize and say, these few hours I can study for this, and for the class that's really, really hard, now I can study six hours for this because it only takes me an hour to understand this one. So I feel like these organizations, they, they hone your skills, they make you better. And, um, and I feel like that's that's really the way to go because you're you're always learning. And um, you don't have to manage your time as much because you have people like Kelsey and you have people like them who are willing to help you out and, and stick your neck out for you. So we, we are a family, we do help each other out and that's that's pretty much what I've used my Florida Coast collection. All right, thank you guys for that. Um, if you guys have questions like afterwards, you know, they have to do some um, school in the fall or you know, if you have questions immediately after.